Okay. Viv? Lord, I just pray you would help me to share only what you want me to share. I want to start out with a testimony. Earlier this last week, I had this really, really strong urge to just start walking. And as many of you know, I have rheumatoid arthritis. While my left knee does not straighten out and my right hip wants to give up all the time. So I have to walk with the walker and I kind of like hobble along. I was like, mm. if I just had my cane just to touch the top of it, I would do it because I want to know that there's something there to support me. So a couple more days go by and I felt the urge when I went into the bathroom, make sure your cane is with you. So I was like, okay. So I put my cane in there with me. And when I got up, I started walking with my cane. I walked into the living room and I said, Hey, Paul. <laughs> and um, he was like, wow. But then the next day I realized when I was walking with my walker, I usually have to shuffle my right foot. The right leg doesn't pick up because of the hip. It hurts all the way down. I was able to pick my right leg up and place it down, pick it up, place it down, pick it up, place it down. When I was in prayer meeting the other day with Miriam and Margaret, I said, I feel like he's unwinding me. He's undoing because I feel now like I did with strength, like I did when I moved here in October. He's starting to unwind the process. And I was scared to say anything because I thought, well, maybe it's temporary. Maybe I'm just feeling this way today or tomorrow or, you know, whatever. And yesterday I had a, an issue. I was upset about something and it had to do with food. And I wanted what I wanted. And I got a little miffed. And I dealt with someone in a way that was not self controlled. And I regretted it, the things I said and the way I put it the moment that it came out of my mouth. But it was like God was saying, you've been doing it your whole life. It's time to make a change. And I was like, well, I've come against this again and again, but I'm not getting anywhere. I'm not able to pick up my feet and make headway. I need your help. So... I kept praying, 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 and I went to bed, fell asleep. He woke me up at four in the morning. Then he took me back. He started showing me where the original break happened, where I was crushed in spirit by something done to me. And then he took me to different incidences all along the way. And he said, those wounds are like holes where the snakes crawl into. And they hide and they speak to you and they bite you again and again and again. And when that biting happens, you wanna squeeze somebody else. You wanna speak to somebody else out of that venom, out of that pain. And then he took me to a really, <laughs> I didn't think it was, I knew it was something that had happened, but I didn't think it was that big of a deal. Boy, was it a big deal. I hadn't gone to my sister's graduation when she graduated because I wanted to watch a favorite show of mine. And I had debated. I was like, I want to go. I, I want to go. I want to be a part of my family. But part of me was like, no, no, stay at home. Besides, your sister is the favorite one. Do you see the way your mother's dressed? She looks so pretty. Does she dress that way for you? Did she treat you the way she treated your sister? You deserve to stay home and treat yourself. 
Inwardly, I was cringing because I felt like I was robbing myself, and I was. Because I turned the program on that I wanted to watch, and it was a rerun. Felt like I was dying inside. I was like, God. I gave this up for that. I wanted to run upstairs and change my clothes and go running up to the high school. I didn't know if I would make it in time. It was only 20, 25 minutes away. And then the enemy spoke to me again. It's okay. It's it's really okay. You're better off here. Besides what's done is done. Just all these lies, all these things. When my mother came home, she said, I'm not going to attend your graduation when you graduate. Years later, she didn't attend my graduation. I was really crushed. And she could tell I was really crushed. And, and she said, Viv, I'm not doing it because I said that. She said, I'm doing it because of my arthritis. And in my head, I was hearing. If it was Darlene, you would do it. it if it was her, you would make every effort to do it. It was like, that's when this is my life. You're all cut off. Came angry and bitter. And more and more snakes started to come in and cripple me emotionally, financially, physically, in every way, because I gave them a place to speak to me. I gave them a place to squeeze me physically, emotionally, and spiritually in every way. And that's what they've been doing for years until I'm just about nothing. But God has hurt me. He is doing the unwinding. And last night when he started showing me all those things, he didn't stop because it was hard. He answered me like he did Job. He said, dress yourself like a man and let me speak to you. I've never had God speak to me like that with such power, conviction, and love at the same time that I felt no condemnation, no shame, no nothing. He started naming the snakes, jealousy, lust, um, lies, just snake after snake after snake. But then he hit this one snake that <laughs> it was like the king cobra, and I was just like, I couldn't speak. He said, Dominion. He said, this snake wants dominion over all the land of your heart, over everything. It wants to take dominion over people, dominion over me, dominion over you. It wants preeminence. I was just appalled and then he's he waited a while and then he said do he reminded me that a few weeks earlier he had told me i want your body <laughs> because we're we're going to be doing the fitness faith family thing and i was shocked i was what? <laughs> you know, I, was like, I didn't know what to think about that that he wanted my body and then he told me, he said, I've prepared a table before you. You need to eat at my table. You need to eat what I tell you to eat, when I tell you to eat it, at the table I tell you to eat it at, because of your enemies. I want to undo them. I want to get them out of there. And it was just like this revelation it was like, you really want to get them out of there? He said, yes, your house. He, 
It's my house, it's my temple. I want it to be devoted to prayer. And I was like, you mean I was really preordained to do this thing that you have me doing? And he said, yes. And he said, but I can't do it without throwing them out. And all day to day, his spirit has just been so sober within me. It's not condemnation, it's not shame, it's sobriety. And he said, I'm bringing all these snakes into the light, every single one of them, and they will not be able to stand in my light. And I know that I'm going to walk again. I don't know when or how long, but I know I'm going to walk again. And I want to walk in his way, not my way. I want to eat what he says to eat when he says to eat it. I don't want to be like the Israelites that say we want the food of our fancy and then choke on it. I'm tired. I'm just tired of saying I love you, Jesus, and then having a part time relationship with him. Every hour, every moment, every day. And it doesn't mean it's going to be easy. But I get upset when I have a friend that says to me, I love you, and then doesn't contact me or spend time with me. How much more? This man, this savior that gave his life for me, that married me, was my time, my love, my attention. And it's hard to comprehend that he would. But he does. I love how willing you are to be completely open and honest with everybody. That's beautiful humility. And you just, you just talked about the very thing that he's saying in 34. In Psalm 34, you want to walk in the fear of the Lord, and that's what you're, that's what you're working so hard on. And I think that's probably, I I believe that's what we're all working on. But that's precious to have. That's why I said, get your Kleenex out, guys. And that whole thing you were talking about with the snakes, that's that's a powerful visual of what he was saying years ago that he's tired of seeing his people walking around hurting, hurting because of the things, whatever they are. He wants us healthy and whole, and that only comes in him. Is there anybody on here that's already arrived at all that yet? Not me. <laughs> Not me. I haven't. I'm still working on it too. You know, and that thing... The thing about that, too, is that sometimes the way the Lord deals with us in those things that are still hurting is that he keeps making us have to do the thing we don't want to have to do. Because fear has told us that we can't handle it. And so the Lord goes, oh, no, we're not going to let the enemy have that kind of power over you. I'm going to, I'm going to allow you to be in those. It's me driving over the bridges. Remember me tell you, telling you guys before I used to be terrified to drive over bridges and now one just fell down. Well, got knocked down. Uh, but I used to be terrified driving over them because every time I just would see the bridge go down and I was in the water in the car and drowning, you know, it's that kind of a thing. And so the Lord put me in a position where I had to drive over bridges every single day until that was conquered. So sometimes that's how he gets that stuff out of us is just to go, oh, I don't want you to be afraid of this. Here, let's just deal with it right now this way. If you can't let go of it, then we're just going to keep going through it until you say, I'm okay now. I don't, I, this is not something I have to be afraid of. Or ashamed of. Or ashamed of. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else want to share anything?
Lily? Just uh, going back to um, what we were talking about earlier about, um, you know, seeking the Lord for, for him. And that's one of the things that my husband and I were having a conversation earlier this week about how the 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 body in Christ, uh, the Christians, and we need to, everybody needs to get to that place where, you know, if, if you say, okay, like who, who has a need, who needs prayer for, for sickness or did it, you know, people come, they come run and they want, you know, that, but when you say, okay, who, who's going to come to prayer night or who's going to, you know, do this or that, where it's like a seeking, then there's less people. And, you know, we're talking about how, like, there's such just, um, a need of people to understand that we, and those were the words that we were using, you know, we need the, to seek his face and not his hand and seek the, the giver, not the gifts and, and how people, if people could understand, uh, the, the, the beauty of having a life of worship, we were called to have a life of worship. And it's not just, you know, singing the songs on Monday or Sunday or whenever services is, but that your life needs to be a life of worship that in everything that you do it it's a it's, it's to worship the lord and and glorify the lord with in obedience and just um yeah that's what we, just that's what the conversation we were we were having about how our lives you know everyone you know our lives need to be as 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 christians in general a, a life of worship and relationship with the lord um and not just you know uh, when you're gathered with other people and and that that that's just been one of the things that's been on our heart how to um kind of guide and help people understand that and you know it's i don't know if when you're in you know been over other people you know you kind of have to repeat things and repeat things and repeat things and repeat them and you know and just pray and wait for the for the Lord to to help them to get to that understanding um where it becomes real to their own lives and um but but yeah yeah cuz it's like we if we're not careful we just keep seeking his hand and that's all we want so we never look up into his face we're always looking to see what's in his hand yeah. Rosa? Um, a little similar to what Lily was saying. I got, uh, I was saved in, I would say 84. And I had, I went through a tremendous divorce in 81. It was very trying. And even for my children, because I found out my kids were molested by their dad and it was very rough. And I had to go to court and I was mistreated. You know how the judge looks at the women instead of, you know, helping. It's like, well, you should have been there. No, I had to work at night to support myself, even though I was married and he would take care of them. Well, whatever. I had all this stuff inside and I would kind of ignore it. And what I would do is work, constantly working. I would work seven days. I would, uh, it was like a, to try to not face what the problem was. So um, back, and so what happened was that in 83, I had this dream, I wasn't saved yet, but I had this dream and in the dream, it was like, I was sitting on a rock and on the rock and there were these two homes, one on the left and one on the right, but they look like Middle Eastern homes. They were made out of stone. And I'm sitting there and gazing at these two houses and crying and saying, you know, like I was debating which one should I go to, but I just sat there. But I saw behind me before I sat on the rock, 
I saw this beautiful city. It was beautiful. All it was emerald and all all kinds of stones and everything. But I didn't really know what it was, but it was beautiful. So I sat on the rock. And as I'm sitting in the rock, I feel this person coming towards me. And I could see on the side that he had a long robe. I couldn't see his face, but he was wearing this beautiful white robe. And I looked at him and he pointed to the one house. So I got up after I was crying knocked on the door and there was this and there was this man there with his back then he turns around and he offers me a loaf of bread so I take the bread so then I go and then he points to the next house and there's a woman there and she offers me some water so I take the water and I and I drank it I didn't know what it was about then, then that was a dream, but I was still going through a lot. Then what happened in, when I got saved in 80, then I realized that God was saying the bread of life and the living waters. So then in 84, when I got saved, I realized I was dying of a broken heart. I mean, really dying. I would go do things, but I wasn't there. It was physically, but nothing else. I didn't care about anything. I had my kids and I tried to help them, but I couldn't be the mother they wanted me to because I was dying inside. And then what happened was the Lord said, I want you to go to this ministry in Manhattan. So I told my friend and she took me. And after the service, uh, I met the pastor's wife and she said, oh my God, we need to pray for her. She's dying. So she prayed for me. And when I got home that night, I sat on my bed and I was praying. And I felt the power of God just go through me in a way that something just came out. It just just came out of my my being and I felt this love and I did and it was like the dying feeling was gone so so then I realized like what the psalm says the brokenhearted so then years later back in 99 I thought it was fine and then and I think I had mentioned this before we had an all-night prayer meeting and at midnight, the pastor said, the Lord said to go to the altar. He's going to do some work in us. So when I go to the altar, I hear the Lord say, the Lord say to me, this is your heart. He showed me my heart. Guys, I had a scab this big in my heart, a scab. And I'm saying, what in the world is that scab? He said, that is a wound that you still haven't gotten rid of. And whenever someone does it again, it opens and it oozes. Then it closes up again and then it turns into a scab. And I said, oh my God, I don't want it. Please remove it. So he showed me a vision that he had my, that he had my heart and he was in his hands and he was massaging it. As he was massaging it, I said, I felt, I felt this feeling of like I had surgery. And then, then he showed me my heart and that scab wasn't there anymore. He had healed it totally. So I thought it was okay because I got delivered for this. I didn't know I had that. So what I'm, what I'm trying to say is, we can really hide things, but you can't hide them from God. We hide them from ourselves. We cover them up with religion. Oh, I'm okay. I, you know, I go to church and, you know, I speak in tongues and all this other stuff. But God sees what's in us. 
And I think we're coming to the time of where the rubber meets the road, where he's not going to want to tolerate this stuff anymore. He, he wants us to be, uh, you know, like the, the scripture says, be ye perfect as my father is perfect. Well, this is what he wants us to be. He wants us to get rid of all this stuff that's making us suffer and are, and is standing in the way of us really having an intimate relationship with him. You know, it's like you're on your honeymoon and this is a wonderful time and you're wearing dirty pajamas that stink. <laughs> so your husband's not going to get close to you. So this so this is what the Lord is, you know, trying to tell us. You're coming to me, but it there's stench. And I love you and I want to cleanse you. I know it sounds funny, but that's just an analogy. I'm sorry, I didn't know my mic was off. Thank you for telling me because <laughs> I'm going, how come Lily's not talking? I said Lily. Oh. I also said throws a thank you. That was a good that was a good analogy. Very, very visual thing there. Okay. Well, it's ahead, just Lily. that scripture where the, you know, it says the sacrifices of a uh, of God are broken, you know, broken and contrite spirit, and he will not despise it. You know, it's just sometimes we feel like, oh, I have to be so perfect, da, 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 da. but you know, if you just lay it all before the Lord and, and how, you know, she was saying, you know, you can't hide anything from God. So it's like, why try to hide it? Because he knows it anyways, you know, just bring it before the Lord. And remember back in 2022, when for a number of years, I was going through just a very, um, like a deep depression, um, the certain things that had happened, and, you know, it was like how she was saying, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a, a scab and, and it starts to heal and then something happens again and it gets pulled off again and you start to bleed it again. And it's just, so I ended up just, you know, being like really just in a depression. And I think that's one of the things that it's kind of like taboo. People don't want to talk about it, you know? And, um, but in 2022, the Lord just, he did such a beautiful thing in my life, which I am eternally grateful for. And he worked in me and he, he took away that, that, that pain. He healed my heart. He healed my mind. And he brought me such freedom that I hadn't had in so long. And I remember sitting in prayer time and in worship time, I could literally feel the Lord's arms around me hugging me it was like he was hugging me and it's the most beautiful thing that you could ever feel is his love washing over you healing you um i thank the lord because um i'm not the same person i was by his grace and his mercy and he's taught me so much in the last few years about who he is and you know like job says um in Spanish, I Rosa, if you translate, de oídas te ve a oído más mis ojos te ven. You know where he says, you go ahead, Rosa. Say that again slowly, dear. De de oído te ve te ve a oído más mis ojos te ven. My eyes have, uh, my ears have heard, and your eyes and have seen. Is that what you're saying? It's like where Job was saying that, like basically, he had heard of the Lord, but now my eyes really see you. Oh, okay. okay. And so it was kind of like one of those things where, Lord, I knew of you, I heard of you, but now my eyes have seen, have seen you. Um, I'm just so, so thankful for, for what the Lord has been doing in our, in our lives and my marriage and our, 
the ministry which he has charged us with and such a beautiful thing um to to see and to feel the lord and to hear the lord and we'll just encourage everyone you know if we just continue to seek him continue to pour our hearts out before him and be honest with him because he already knows um he will like his arm is not short to where he cannot save and his ear is not you know he's not deaf that he can't hear um so that's just what i wanted to share thank you lily You know, guys, sometimes we just need to be reminded the Lord sees every single move we make in his direction. Every single one. None of it's none of it goes unnoticed. He sees it all. And there's that in EK. Hello. 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 Hi. Hi. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry I came in late. That's okay. We're glad you're yeah. here. Yeah. How are you? We're good. We're all a bunch of crybabies today, some of us anyway, because <laughs> we're just talking about how awesome the Lord is and how much he loves us and yeah. and uh, how he keeps calling us to him and wants us to, uh, he wants everybody to be healed of all of the broken things in us so that we can be First of all, because he doesn't want to see us continue to hurt. And this isn't about physical healing. It's about the things that we still carry inside of us, the the things that cause us to either turn away from him or not believe him or just to struggle, to have a hard time to forgive, what whatever it is. He's he's very much interested in working to get his people healthy in our souls and in our relationships with him so that's kind of what we're talking about although i'm you know i'm not very good at it may as a whole lot more than that but that's it in a nutshell <laughs> kind of and somebody can add to that if you want to yeah fathers he doesn't want to see us just walking around all messed up inside because of things that have happened or are happening or that will happen in the future so that we're not terrified when we see things uh, that are difficult to see. And he's talking to us about looking into his face and not, not letting our relationship be mostly about seeking his hand and what he has for us, you know, we have this need and that need. And of course we have needs. That's not to say that we don't. But truly the longer we gaze into his face, and it's that scripture in Psalm 27 where he's saying, one thing have I desired of the Lord that I'm, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. And so as he helps us move our gaze to the circumstances or the past or what could be in the future and just start practicing that now in a way to say, I, you know, that's my goal, Lord. I want to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So I, I want to learn how to do that while I'm still here in whatever ways I can in this flesh vessel <clears throat> that I'm in. I want to learn how to be with you, Father. And then the more we see his face, the easy, the dimmer, the things that, whether it's needs or wounds or anything, the dimmer those things become because that's, that's where everything we could possibly ever hope for is found in him. Marcy, I see your fingers going up and down on the, Screen, you got something, girl. Did you say Marcy? Yep, I sure did. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of it's kind of 
um, it's, I don't even have the words, um, because uh, if you would have had this session a couple months ago, or three or four or five, maybe six months ago, I would have been just had so many things to bring up. But, um, but my focus is on him again. And um, now when I say again, it's because, you know, most people know that I would, my first 10 years I was at his feet and he was, he was moving and I was seeking his face. That's it. I wasn't seeking his hand and he was moving in our lives. Um, just amazingly. And, um, then I turned, took a t wrong turn because I thought, you know, I had missed something. And, um, so I took the wrong turn into, um, uh, you know, the tour observant group and so forth. And um, even though I didn't go in, you know, I still, I had such a foundation with him that thankfully that something was, you know, while well, the Holy Spirit was pulling me back, you know, actually my husband had a dream and uh, it was like after the first year, and um, he doesn't have dreams. <laughs> if he does, he doesn't share them with me. But he, my dad was dying and I was way, I was down with my mom and dad in Arkansas. And while my dad was dying and um, he said, I had a strange dream. And, you know, he, he was telling me that, you know, my former husband was a car dealer. I use car dealer. And he said, I was with your husband. Well, they're not friends even though they had nothing to do with each other, you know, as far as things go. Um, but I knew exactly when he said, you know, I was with your husband, I knew who he was talking about. He was talking about the Lord, but he didn't know. And, and he said, and we were buying a new car. We were buying a used car and I had called him to see if he would come and look over the car. So he said, I, he came over and was looking at the car and it, he said, Oh, it looks really good. It's really just everything looks really good. You know, he looked underneath it and everything. He said, well, let's check the engine. So, um, my husband now said, um, you know, I popped the hood and the engine looked really nice too. Everything looked really spotless. He said, well, let's check the oil. And he said, so when I checked the oil, he said, I pulled out the dipstick and it was like sludge. And I knew exactly what was what the Lord was saying, but I couldn't understand it because, you know, I, I, I had been crying out to the Lord. How, you know, how did I miss it? You know, I had the Holy Spirit inside of me, the, the one who created the whole universe. And how did I not see um that we were still supposed to be you know following the law that kind of thing you know and and father was trying to say you know wait a minute <laughs> put a hold on this but i stayed in that not in the, in the in the depth that i was in before at that point but i came pulled out away and um i was always crying out for the holy spirit you know but I never found the Holy Spirit. It, w it was very dry. It was very dry. And there was a lot of bitterness that started happening. And you know, like the snakes that Vivian's talking about, they come in and, um, and I had asked the Lord, you know, I, I just, I, I'm just longing to, for the Holy Spirit to be a part of my life again, our lives again, the fellowships that I was in. And I didn't see it anywhere. And then I got on Facebook. Uh, at The Lord had been wanting me to get on Facebook. I didn't want to be on it. You know, I just put it off for years and years and years. But I finally got on it. But the only people that I was w around, you know, s that I surrounded myself with at that point was Messianic people. 
you know, the tour observant people. So, um, anyways, make a long story short, the, you know, uh, the Lord had, uh, because I was crying out to him and crying out to him, he was bringing me back, bringing me back, bringing me back. And, but there's been a lot that I've had to deal with as far as that bitterness, because he showed me it was Wormwood. You know, I was asking him and he said Wormwood. So I looked that up and it's bitterness. And so I've had to deal with the bitterness and, and so forth in my life. But I, in the past couple months that um, there's been, there's been such a release um, that <laughs> I am feel so free that even when people you know say things that are wrong I just I'm back to where I was before and not that I was I had arrived don't get me wrong but it's like I don't receive that and if I'm listening to a um, a sermon or something and someone's giving a word I'm receiving whatever I know the Lord wants me to receive and I'm receiving that. And I know the Holy Spirit's power is if we believe that we are receiving what he wants us to receive because the Holy Spirit is way bigger than our little puny minds with that religious spirit. Um, and so Gina and uh, Gina and Margaret the other night, we were we were talking, we were praying and talking, and they had asked me if or, you know, I heard of this man, uh, Kevin, I can't remember his last name. I always said it slipped my mind, but I listened to him. Yeah, I looked him up, you know, and I hadn't known him because I was in the Messianic group. So I didn't know the Christian people anymore, you know, and um, I listened to him. And yes, Kevin's the die. Thank you, Gina. <laughs> So when I listen to him, and I've listened to a couple of his, oh my gosh, I mean, it's, the, the, it's so refreshing to know that, you know, we can just trust and believe what God says and not have to receive the garbage from the enemy or have to fear the garbage from the enemy because, you know, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world, but Sometimes we just don't believe it because there's so much hurt in us that we're, you know, we refuse to believe it. There's so many wounds. And so I just have to tell you that I, I have been so refreshed in these past two days that uh, honestly, I'm, I feel like I'm ready to take on the devil, you know, take him on because greater is he that is in me than he is in the world. And so, yeah. You know what I know it's not it's not as easy as it sounds, but it is easy. It's simple. He said it was a simple enough for a child, for a child to even um grasp and understand and believe and walk in. And yes, we, we go through these these times where we are children and then we become adolescents. And I think that's where I'm actually at. So Vivian, you spoke to me because he's been talking to me about my about the food you know and I was telling him today well I don't really even know if that's you telling me that when we heard <laughs> because you know there's certain things that I like and uh, I wasn't willing to give it up and then guess what I hear I hear Kevin before I came here he was talking about he he likes Captain Crunch and he he has this big craving for Captain Crunch well he has these two big boxes of Captain Crunch that he bought sitting there and he refuses. He said, I'll never be able to have that the rest of my life because I'm giving that up. It's not important to me. You know, what God has called us and the purpose he's called us in is much more imp important. And if we can just realize that he called us for in, into a purpose and he set us apart while he was, while we were in our mother's womb. And that's what I know. He set me apart. He set you apart. He set every single one of us apart while we were in our mother's womb. That means he set us apart for his purposes, not for the enemy's purposes. If we would just put our mindset around that. And so I'm like, wow, this means I'm going to have to 
and I want to give up things that, you know, that I've been making excuses for. So Vivian, thank you for sharing that because it was a confirmation of what I was already feeling. And um, the other stuff is not important. Um, the offenses that happened, the wounds that happened, it's not, those aren't important to me anymore. The purpose that he put me on this earth and to fulfill is important. Now my husband's not there with me, but, but I know I'm speaking that in to existence because my words are creative because I'm made in the image of God, not because of Marcy, but because of him. And so those are the things I'm going to speak now. So anyways, I'm sorry I took up so much time, but I love you all. I thank you. I, I can I can glean from every single one and, and Dr. Rosa, same thing with what you were saying. I just, I'm gleaning from everyone and so thankful for all of you because yeah. I'm not, I'm not where a lot of you are um, as far as visions and things like that, but that's seeking his hand, isn't it? I need to seek his face, just seek his face. Yeah. And you did not talk too long, Marcy. Thank you for everything you said. And I'm glad you were talking about how, you know, letting go of all the other stuff. That's, that's where so much of the time the enemy traps us is that we're still looking at the other stuff. And the Lord's going, really, if you just follow me, if you just seek my face all through Psalm 34, all through, just seek my face and I've got you. That's it. I've got you. I've got everything you need. You know, think about Solomon, you guys, how the Lord asked him what he wanted for his kingdom, to rule his kingdom. And Solomon did not ask for wealth or any of those kinds of things. And the Lord said, because you asked for wisdom to be a good ruler, I'm going to give you those other things. So we don't have to go necessarily saying, I need this and I need that, because he already knows our needs. If we seek his face, that favor that he has for those who are seeking his face just gets poured out. He just pours it out. He's going, oh, look at this one right here. You see this one right here? <laughs> this one that loves me. Here, have some stuff. That's just how God is. He is, he is a giver. He is such a giver. Lily. We have a friend that recently had two strokes about uh, two weeks apart. Um, he's not doing too well right now, but you know, one of the things that we were, you know, my husband was, you know, talking to him about is learning to to rest in the Lord and not take on so much, um, and not to stress so much. Because, you know, how the Lord says we can't add to ourselves, you know, by by worrying, you know, we have to learn how to 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 do with the things, bring them to the Lord's feet, leave them there, not bring them back unto yourself. Because, you know, he we have to find rest, rest in him. That's a, a, something else that I was sharing with another friend of ours who her husband is. um he's in the last stages of dementia and he's, his lungs are starting to fail and, and everything. And she's, you know, she was just, it was so, so much. And we were going, you know, regularly like uh, to go visit with her and she can't make it out um, of the house much. So we're, you know, we're, you know, taking, you know, like services to her. So we sing with her and my husband will preach and she invited a couple of people over and we just had such a beautiful time together in the fellowship of her living room just worshiping the Lord together and it's just one of the things that you know was just so much on our heart is just to learn how to rest the rest in the Lord you know he he will give you peace he will you know if you just let go and trust him Amen. That's right. I want to make sure we say hi to Beatrice and Adenike. Adenike. I'm sorry. What? How come your name is spelled two different ways, girl? Oh. Huh? A D E N I K E. Adenike. Yeah. And ha who is Analika Agbu? Wait a minute. 
We have two. Do we have two different? Are you on two, or is that two different people? No, that is two different people. That that sounds that looks like an idea name. And we Wait. have both. Say Am it I again. Right? We we I didn't think... understand that. Say it again. Anulika, I think the person should um, speak up. Anulika Ogu, if I'm right. Yeah, that looks like yeah. an idea. We've got an Adenike Odeloye, and we've got Anulika Ogbu. Ogbu. Yes. Same person? No, not same person. I don't know. Not same person. You guys just your names are kind of close on the first name. So yeah, that person looks that person's name sounds like the Nigerian name. Looks and sounds like Oh, I can't understand you. Your your sound is not real clear. Can you okay. Can you hear me okay. now? I'm an Okay. Okay, so I we do need, we do two different I you guys just your Ohio. I'm from Nigeria. You're from Nigeria and at an I, guess, is... I guess that's much. I'm from Nigeria and I live in I live in Tip City, Ohio. Okay. So ask me if I can speak English. Not very well sometimes, huh? Okay. <laughs> All right, you guys. All right. Yeah. I... Okay. Anybody else? Well, you guys, welcome. I'm so glad you guys are here. We're all glad you're here. And there's Yvette. Hi, Yvette. I guess that's Yvette, although I know sometimes it's Kabir. It's, and not, it's you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Okay. Anybody else? For those who came late, we are covering uh, the topics of how the Lord wants his people to be healed and, um, just had some wonderful testimonies. Paul? For what? I hope I don't go down a bunch of rabbit trails. I'll try to guard my heart. <laughs> um, it seems like there's seasons that the Lord comes in and brings healing. And it's not like he can heal us all at once, because I don't believe that. I think everybody has layers and layers of different things in their lives that he deals with at different times. And, you know, lots of times we, I think we just want, oh, I mean, for me, it's like, oh, I just want to be all fixed. <laughs> but it seems like it's a little bit at a time, a little bit of time, and it takes, <clears throat> it takes a few years, if not, you know, more than that. But I'm noticing here in, in a different part of the country, I'm used to San Diego, so we don't, we only have one season there. <laughs> That's where the sun shines all the time, <laughs> and clouds come once in a while, and it, it drips a little few drops now and then. But I'm seeing, I'm seeing trees that are blooming, and it came by came really fast. I was it was just shocking to me. All I mean, forever there's like all you know, these naked trees, and it's just it doesn't look so pretty. And all of a sudden, there's blooming, and it's like, oh wow! And it seems, it seems like God's doing that for me. I've been waiting a long time. I mean, thirty, forty years. I don't know <laughs> because it's just been a long, long journey. It's been a long time, like in the desert with Abraham, you know, and he went along and it's like, and then God spoke to him again. And it's like, that went 20 years past. <laughs> and then, you know, how, you know how the story goes with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and Joseph. But I'll just share this one little thing here. Uh, so uh, I'm like a month and a half ago, I, I went to go get my driver's license and my van license. And I hit all these road stops and blocks and th other things I had to do. I had to go back, get something from the, the <clears throat> social security to prove who I was and this and that. And that, that kind of stumped my travel for <laughs> until today. <laughs> so before I went, Vivian and I just prayed and we said, Lord, just make a way for me. Because it seems like everything I do, everything on the computer, even if I go through, do something, it's like there's always, it was always an issue. It was like something outside, like the website's blocked or broken or it's stuck in one place. And I just hit all these things. So 
today I was able to get my license like really quick. And I, I thought I was going to have to take a test, which is no big deal, but I didn't have to. They transfer the stuff over. But then I I had to go to the records. I had to go for something else. I, didn't, I asked her three times. I said, why do I have to go over to the rec county records and ask about a tax exemption? Because we just don't do that in California. And she never explained it to me. But what happened? So I go over there. And what I heard from Chuck and Vicky two days before was there's like a five-hour wait there. And people get there at five in the morning and the doors open at eight. And once you get in the door, it's a five hour wait. And I was like at noon today. So I'm like, well, I just felt, I just heard barely. I was just like, I heard the Lord go, oh, go. And I'm like, well, this seems, doesn't seem, this seems dumb. But, you know, I know I, you know, I just felt a tiny little thing. Just go. I said, okay, I'll go. So I walk in the door. There's no one in line. And the lady goes, oh, we're full today. But <laughs> she goes, but we're doing something new. We just started it five minutes ago, and you're the first person. <laughs> I mean, for the, whole, for the whole state. And we're taking reservations, and you're going to get a, whenever you want your appointment for a Monday, we'll give you an appointment and you can walk in, you can go through this door, go down the end of the hall at eight o'clock and walk right in. And I didn't have to wait five hours. And that, it's, I know it's not a big deal, but God's doing things for us that, you know, inside we have something that self defeats ourselves, And, I've had that all my life. And it's like, you know, all those little things, God's, he's undoing them. He's taking the way. And as you are more obedient to him and he sees you're obedient, he just makes a little bit of way, a little bit more and more. And we always wanted the, you know, the big, you know, and everything's fixed. It's like, no, it's just a little bit at a time. And that's what I found out from him. But it's, you know, I, I understand that it would have never been, it couldn't have been that way. Well, of course he could have, but it's me, it's bu much better to take that slow path because then you know where everybody else is coming from. You know, you can relate to people, their pains, their all oh, this, this, this. You go, oh yeah, I've been, I've been through that and this and this. And it's a much better path because... You know, whether you knew it or not, the Lord was with you. He was, whether he was right behind you, you didn't sense he was there. You didn't know you were there. Because my life is very different from you people where you have memories and you go, oh, back in 30, you know, back in 86, 92, 40, you know, 2017, 2018. It's like, I don't even know what I did a week ago. I mean, truly, I would have to go back and look at my phone and see what I did on that day and go, oh, yeah. But my schedule is like Friday, I have Zoom, Saturday, Zoom and prayer usually. Sunday, there's the, the, the leadership meeting, and Monday is uh, YouTube. <laughs> and then I have Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And it's very simple. I don't have, I don't have pressures. I don't have anything. But still, and then we moved back in October, November. They basically got settled in December, but it's like, it's just still taken long time to get God, God gets settled these things inside of me. And it's like, we see that he does love us. <laughs> he does care for us. And he, he honors what, whatever we can put forth, even if it's only that much, just a little bit, but he wants all of our heart. That's what he's always working on. He's always, we think we gave his a complete heart to him and Oh Lord, but then we found out a week later, or a month later, or two years later, it's like, oh, there's a place that doubts. There's a place that doesn't believe. There's a place that, you know, there's still sin there. And he he's just always working for for all of our heart. And it's uh it's a long journey for everybody. I know that, but it's just mine's been very different. And I'm it's I'm a it's blessed to be here with you ladies and um I hope I'm not <laughs> whatever. <laughs> We're glad you're here with us, Paul. Amen. Glad that you're here, really.
I get a front row seat to his unwinding. And boy, it blesses me to, to see how the Lord is working in his life and setting him free. It, it's like, it's better than a million bucks. <laughs> Does anybody else have anything you want to share before we have sacrament? We have time. There's Lily. Go ahead, Lily. No, I was. I remember we were talking about a few weeks back, about a month or so ago, about like not comparing ourselves to other people and and our walk with the Lord. But another thing that the Lord had to teach me was like to quit trying to prove to other people who you know what like what he has said in my life or that, or who I am in the Lord, just trying to stop trying to prove, you know, because to other people, you know, there's some people that in their eyes, you're never going to be good enough. You know, you're never going to measure up. Um, and it, and then when it comes down to it, it really doesn't matter what other people think of you. And this is one of the things that I've, you know, I've had to come to the realization, as long as I know that I'm walking with the Lord and, and I have a relationship with him and he the Bible says that, you know, the spirit gives testimony to our spirit that we are ch children of God. And, and if I am walking with the Lord and I am bringing everything to him, if I sin, I repent. If there's something I bring it, you know, that's what matters. It doesn't matter what other people think of you, because like I said, there's some people like there's this, this term, a hater is going to hate, but it's like, there's this term that, I mean, it's just, it's true. Like some, with, for some people, no matter what you do, no matter how you change, no matter what, you're never going to measure up in their eyes. And so it's to stop, stop, not only stop comparing yourself to other people, but also stop trying to seek approval from other people. I'm really glad you talked about that. Uh, Lily, the Lord told me years ago, he kept telling me, <clears throat> stop, uh, Stop, stop seeking the approval of man. As long as you do that, you will never do what I have for you to do. You'll never do what I have for you to do. As long as you're trying to, uh, he says, stop trying to please man. As long as you're trying to please man, you won't do what God wants you to do because you'll be more concerned about what people think. And then, so that takes God off the throne, but it took many years before he finally revealed to me that the person that I was trying to please by being a please, people pleaser was myself. The person that was on the throne was Vicki because when God's on the throne, it doesn't matter what anybody says. So anytime we are seeking that approval, we're trying to sit on father's throne. We really are. We're lifting ourselves up and saying, oh, I want people to like me. Oh, I want people to think I'm wise or honorable or anything. I, you know, as long as we're doing that, so I said, you'll never please me. You'll never do all that I have for you to do as long as you are trying to please man. So, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Thank you, Lily. Anybody else? Okay, well, if nobody has anything else, I'm going to put my grapes back up on the screen because I'm going to go get my uh, juice and cracker. You guys want to go get ready for sacrament? And I'll be back in a minute.
I'm going to assume that everybody's back and ready. I can't tell just by looking at names. So I'm guessing, <laughs> I'm guessing. Are you all back? Can you give me a thumbs up or anything to let me know if you're back? Gina Ponzani is back. Paul's back. Well, we can see your face, Paul. <laughs> Lily's back. Good. Okay. I like that. I like that, Lily. Cheyenne's back. Good deal. Catherine's back. <clears throat> Miriam's back. Are ready? I know she's probably always there. She just off camera. Although I have to say she has a beautiful ceiling. Don't you like her ceiling, you guys? <laughs> I think that's the ceiling. <laughs> okay. Well, let's go ahead and pray, you guys. Margaret's back. Edenike's back. Annalika, are you back? Janet Hickey, are you here? Yes, I'm there. I'm back. All right, good. Deal. Yes, I'm here. All right, you guys ready for ready for sacrament? Okay. Well, let's let's talk to Father. Lord God, we thank you so much. We thank you, Father. what you've done to prove your love to us time and again, just over every, so many ways we can't begin to count them. And of course, the greatest gift of all is the way you proved your love by the sacrifice you made. Thank you, Yeshua, for laying your life down for us. Thank you, Father God, for sending your son to pay a debt we could never pay. Never, ever pay. Thank you, not just for your death, but for taking your life up again, as you were told by your father to do. Take your life up and for going and being seated at the right hand of God. Thank you for sending Holy Spirit to be with us, to teach us about you, things that are too marvelous and too deep for us to understand on our own. Thank you for the gift of life and the gift of hope. Thank you for brothers and sisters in Christ who love you and who encourage one another who bless one another with, just with their very presence. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that you have a body and that you are carefully tending to your body. For every gift and every blessing for the angels that you send to the heirs of salvation to minister for your protection, for your goodness, for the trials you allow us to go through, for absolutely everything, Father. Thank you for the purification process. It seems to be an ongoing process, God. And that's okay. We're grateful. <laughs> We're grateful, Lord. We thank you for the bread that represents your broken body that was broken for every single one of us. And for the wine or the juice that represents your blood that was shed for every single one of us. And Father, we, we want to be healthy and whole so that we are absolutely clean vessels before you, Lord. If there are people we're holding things against, we trust your spirit to reveal that to us. And Father, we want to forgive 
first before we even ask you or before we even come to you and hold up the bread and the wine and say we're doing mm -hmm. something in remembrance of you when what we refuse to do is let go of the things that others have done to us. So please forgive us for that. We release everyone who's ever offended, ever, ever yes. offended us yes. in any way, Lord. Yes. And Father, we ask you to forgive us for holding on to offense because you have not held on to offense where we are concerned. So we honor you this day, Father, as we take the bread and the wine, and we thank you so much, God, for everything you're doing. In the name of our Savior, Yeshua, Jesus the Christ, amen. You guys, as always, it's been absolutely wonderful to be with you. I mean that with all my heart. You bless me so much. You bless Chuck and and you bless me so much. We love you guys. Someday we're going to get to say that to you face to face. And it's going to be awesome. Are you guys ready to say goodbye for today? I'm not. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Love you guys. Love you too. Father, I pray for your blessings over everyone who came today, over their families, over their relationships, over their lives, over the over the things they're doing for you. I pray for your blessings, Lord God, that each one would hear with clarity in whatever ways you talk to them that uh, each one would hear with clarity the call that you have in their lives. And Father, where the enemy has torn your people down, Almighty God, I pray that you would build up each one in the places where we are in need of being built up so that we can honor you in every way, so that when the things are said or done or things that may happen come, we are not broken by them. Rather, we walk in the wholeness and the fullness of our Savior, Yeshua, Jesus, the Christ, in faithfulness, in wisdom, in power, in might, in gentleness, in love, in humility, so that we're a blessing to the people in our lives, whoever they are, wherever they are, so that, so that whatever it is you're trying to do in them is not hindered by the way that we mishandle the precious gift of the blessings that you've called us to be. Thank you, Father, for everyone. Lord God, bless them, bless them, bless them mightily, I pray in Yeshua's name. Amen. Bye. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom. Oh, that reminds me I get to get a video up. Okay. Love you guys. Are Love you. you. Bye. Bye.
Bye. Love you too. Bye. Bye bye. Love you. Bye, love you. Love you. Bye, Miriam, we can try to connect next week. We didn't make it happen this week, and that's been my fault. I've been busy. Margaret, okay, and everybody's leaving, and everybody's leaving. Okay, guys. Janet Hickey, I'm glad you came today, sweetie. And Alika, I'm glad you came too. Had Thank you. Yeah, honey, yeah. Thank you. Both you girls, it was so good to see you. I don't know. All of those African names, they're just, I get all messed up, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> they're heavy beautiful names, right you, huh i said heavy heavy names that well they, they're so um lyrical Anelika. 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 i mean look at that look at how it's like melodic it's like beautiful melodies all right oh, thank girl. you you're welcome thank you yeah. I didn't name you, but you're welcome. <laughs> you. I love you guys. I'll see you Love later. You yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.